Hi, I'm Dan. I welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this 2x4 dual box fan exhaust system for overspray in your garage. Most of the time, you don't even need to exhaust this to the outside. I'm going to be showing you this really cool filter material, and I'm going to show you how I built all of this for approximately $100. Most of the times, I just need to crack a man door, and this will take out all the overspray in my garage when I'm painting with an automotive gun. It's just a fantastic, fantastic filter system. Uh, it's the first one I ever built. I did some research on how to build it, but I want to show you how I did it so you could have one for your garage. So if you like this type of content, stick around, hit that bell so you get future notifications. Give me some comments, good or bad. Really appreciate it. Helps out with the channel. Don't forget to check all my Amazon affiliate links down below for all the products I use in this video. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so today out in the garage, we're gonna be making a paint extraction system. Um, now, we're gonna be using some really simple materials here, uh, some wood, some plywood, some Wasco fans that I got over at Walmart for less than $20. Now, these are not explosion-proof fans, obviously. They're less than $20. This is just going to be to use to move the air or suck the air through the filter so we can get the paint going through the filter. If you're looking for, you know, if you're spraying with paints that are um, highly explosive, this is not the system you want. I'm really making this for the most part to be able to spray my waterborne sealers um, because you're spraying them through an automotive gun and it does create a lot of overspray and I don't want to be breathing that in. So this is why one of the main reasons why I'm making this now. I'm gonna probably be using uh, it for some spray can you know type of uh, paints so anyway uh, did some research on the internet and found this to be I think a very good option for a filter it's made by Andrea I think I'm saying that right spray booth exhaust filters you'll get to see what that looks like in a minute when we pull it out of the box and start putting this all together so with that let's get these uh, fans into a frame and we'll see you in a few minutes all right so what I did was I basically got my board I laid it out and again, these fans are, or my board is going to be four foot by two foot. So it's making a two by four um, base here. So I laid everything out evenly, took my Sharpie, went and marked it all out right here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to measure in about a half of an inch all the way around and cut out inboard of the outside is half of an inch because I'm going to take off these screws right here and I'm going to wind up screwing these. I'm going to get a little bit longer of a screw. I'm going to screw this to my board. All right, so now you can see the double lines that I have on there. And that inner line is the one we're going to be cutting with the jigsaw. So you're going to need two tools for this. You're going to need a 3 8 bit so you can have a starter hole for your jigsaw and your jigsaw. So let's get cutting. screwed the grill from the back side of the fan okay so now I'm gonna put this right back on the uh, uh, sharpie marks on the outside sharpie marks that I had on the plywood then I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill through with a uh, slightly bigger than a 16th inch bit you can use a 16th if you have one but I'd go between an eighth and a 16th and we're gonna drill right down through and we're going to drill holes all the way around. Okay. So just continue going around. There's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. This way, 
you're marking out all your screws because they're going to come in from the face and we're going to screw with some metal screws back into the fan and that's how we're going to fasten this to the plywood. Let's go. Okay, now I took some longer screws or I got some longer screws screws that came out of the fan were only about, I'm going to say, a quarter inch long. So now i got some inch and a quarter screws. I'm going to come in and screw up from underneath in through the plastic um, cover and into the fan. And that's what's going to mount to our door. All right, now that we got nice and secured to our plywood, you see why we left that, that rim in here to be able to screw our fans to the plywood nice and secure. We're going to be putting our filler material over top. The fans are blowing that way, of course. The air is going to get sucked in past the filter material. Okay, so what I did next is I want this to be a little bit more professional looking. So I put and mounted a switch box on the outside. So I have to go with a plastic box. Okay, now the big thing about how to get this switch wired up correctly is so I got a single pole switch here, as you can see on both sides. So the key, the key to this is you cut the plugs off on each fan. So then you have two wires or a wire on your fan. This one wire goes to the one fan that has the black stripes on it, and the other wire does not. Okay, so the wire with your black stripes is your hot wire, and the wire without the black stripes is your neutral. So, you can't see this, but it's on the other side. So this is, both of these wires here are the hot wires. Black stripes on this side, there's black stripes on the other side of that too. And then, you gotta hook all your neutrals together. Okay, so the black wire running in, this is a wire I made up myself. You know, go to your local home center and get yourself. I, I use 10 foot of wire. You can use whatever you want. And this is 14 gauge wire. Uh, so 14, 2, 14, 3, I think it's called 14, 3, because it has a hot, you know, a black, a white, and a ground. Um, so then you also go out and you purchase a plug. Okay, now the plug is, you know, sold separately and the top of that plug comes off right here okay it's held on by you would undo that screw you would slide the orange part down do your wiring slide it back up it's just a cover and then you make your own plug okay so now with that said coming into here getting back to the wiring so what you want to do is you want to take your neutral or your white wire from that black cord and hook it together with the neutrals on your fans so again one neutral from the one fan another neutral from the other fan and then your neutral from your new plug okay so now your hot wire from your black cable that you just made goes to the one pole on the switch and then your other two hots again one hot from each fan goes to your other pole okay and that's how you wire it and i know that because of trial and error and with the help of a little friend, you can see what happens when you don't wire it correctly. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, I got a nice little uh, melted cord there. Um, it arced pretty good, kept tripping the breaker because I had it wired wrong. So this is very key and very crucial, and this is why I took my time to show you how this is wired up. Now, because of the fan not having a ground, and it's only a two-prong plug, your ground, I'd like to say from your new black cord coming in is just going to be non-existent you can just clip that off right there it's not going to do anything so technically you can buy a two cord 
um, wire or a plug I'm sorry you could buy a two cord wire or a two cord plug if you choose but I just use the three cord wire and I use the three cord prong even though the ground actually is not going to be doing anything in this case all right so this is a few steps ahead of where you saw it last I took the outlet box from the front of the fan and I put it on to the top it was going to interfere with my filter material that's why I put it down there now. What's really cool is, and I'll put the little photo right up above here of what this is. It is metal duct tape. This is what actual duct tape is. It is for forming or seaming together metal ducts. So it's a metal tape, which is very sticky and it's just phenomenal stuff. It has such strength. It's an aluminum tape, basically. Very, very thin aluminum um, with a very sticky back on it. So I sealed up all my joints with that. The other thing is I told you I'm trying to do this on a cheap. So uh, what I did was I got some cardboard boxes from Lowe's or Home Depot. Take your pick. Dollar a box. Two boxes did it. So I trimmed them all up. I actually put some staples in the edges of my box just to hold them on until I can get the tape on. Taped everything together. This tape has tremendous holding power i mean it's just just really cool stuff um when you work with it uh, you'll see what i mean you'll really like it so now the next step we're going to do is we're going to build a bracket on the face of this thing so we can slide our filter material in and out so when we want to replace it we'll just be able to lift it out and replace it with new stuff all right, the next part is going to be attaching this filter material uh, by Andre to uh, the front of our exhaust fan. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a little channel where we're going to be able to slide this, you know, in or out and attach it to that channel. Now, there are several ways we can make this channel or bracket that we're going to be sliding this into. Could have made it out of steel, could have made it out of wood, or you know what? I decided to go with the cheapest option. I'm going to make it out of plain old cardboard and with this aluminum duct tape. Again, this is super strong stuff. It's gonna do a really good job with just this and the cardboard. We're gonna make up some channels and slide this in and out, and it's gonna keep cost down, it's gonna keep weight down. So with that, let's give it a try. All right, so off camera what I did was, and I'm gonna show you how to make the, the next one, but I made a channel out of the cardboard. And basically what I did was, I went, with a, I went two inches, two and three eighths, and two inches, okay? Because our material, where it's gonna be fitting in here, our filter material is about two and a quarter. So this is gonna be the base or the bottom of the channel. And I'm gonna run two side pieces up. And we're gonna slip the filter material in from the top. And the channel is gonna be what holds it. Being I work this one up off camera, I'm gonna show you how to make the side rails. All right, so basically all you need is your frame, little framing square or a ruler and a Sharpie. And I'm just gonna lay out my, or lay my cardboard right down on top of my fan here. All right, so I'm gonna start off by measuring two inches. Then I'm gonna go two and three eighths, because again, remember our material is two and, two and a quarter. So we're gonna give it a little bit leeway there. An eighth inch, two, three eighths. And then another two inches. Now, what I'm going to be using as my brake or to bend, okay, because not everybody has a brake laying around the garage like I don't, but I have a four foot level, so it's really going to come in handy. Um, it's going to be difficult to do it without a four foot level, so if you don't have one, I recommend you probably get one, and you know what, you'll be able to use that for a lot of other things besides this project. I'm going to come on over here to the other side, and I'm going to measure out the same thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my level here, my four foot level, I'm gonna strike some lines. Just to make sure I stay on track here. To the next one.
And the last one. All right, for this next step, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get some good, brand new, sharp, straight edge razor blades or whatever you wanna cut this with. You can do it with a utility knife. I prefer a straight blade, um, but the key is you wanna make sure it's sharp. I'm gonna freehand cut along this outer line and the outer line only because these, are, are, these other two inner lines are our break lines, so we're not gonna cut those. Now, what I will say too is we're making the sides for this piece and this box or a fan box is four by two or two by four. So I'm gonna cut a four foot strip here and we're gonna be using this half of it for one side and half for the other side. Whereas when I made the channel on the first one, you'll have to cut out, you know, your four foot width will make your bottom half. I'm going to move I'm going to move my cut line just off my box because I'm using my box as a table right now. My fan box as a table, so I'm going to move it just off of the box. So I can get in here and make sure I, my blade gets all the way through the box. Grab my square here. Give myself a nice reference line. Now, just to make this easier, I'm going to show you. I'm going to bend this channel all up in one, and then I'll cut it in half to make, uh, you know, two foot for each side. But it's just going to be easier just to bend this all up at one shot with the four foot level. All right, so I'm going to set my level right up on that line. I'm going to press down with the palms of my hands, and I'm just going to start not trying to do it all in one shot, but pick up on the cardboard making sure my level stays on the line. Just running my fingers underneath it to start the crease. And then start running back and bring it up a little higher. To run your fingers across this just you know three or four times you can see the cardboard starting to come up toward the level once you got it pretty well creased like that you can just work it in the crease It's like folding a piece of paper. So there you go. Now we're going to take it. We're going to repeat on the other side. All right. So what's critical now is you're really going to want to take a measurement from your crease to the next line because you really do need two and three eighths there. Because you know if this thing creeped on you a little bit, whatever, it's it's okay. The sides aren't really that crucial. What's crucial is going to be from your the inside of your two folds where your uh, filter material is going to be laying. And like I said, the filter material is two and a quarter, so you need two and three eighths. So 
So you're going to want to make your adjustments at this time. Now that's not too bad, but I'm going to adjust that just a hair. Um, I had to adjust. I had to adjust the uh, this piece when I did it too. So again, the two vertical pieces or side pieces aren't the critical uh, measurement that you need. You need what's inside here. So this is the time you're going to want to check it. See, so now I found that to be a little off. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to rerun down my marker on it. So again, you're, be, you're better being a little bit wider than not wide enough. If you're not wide enough, you're going to have a hard time getting that material in and out. Let's just triple check our measurement. Okay, feeling pretty good about that. Now, you can see the difference. I don't know why, but I did measure the first time, but I'm getting a different measurement now, now that I folded that up. So you just want to be careful. Well, all right, I think I got my measurements right now. Now, what I always say is my dad always told me, measure twice, cut once. In my case, it's measure eight, nine times, do it once. So I think I got it right now. Now we're gonna do the same techniques we did over here. And we're just gonna uh, clamp down a little bit on, you know, hold down on our, our, our level. And we're gonna start picking up a little bit at a time on our cardboard just to get it started. Once we get it started, and you get that initial crease in there, you'll be all right. Well, all right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this thing in half because our side rails need to be two foot and this should be four foot. So we got four foot and I'm going to Walk off at two. Right. Not at this point, it doesn't really matter if we flatten it out for a second to draw our line and cut it. All right, so there you go. There we have it. We have our two sides and we got our bottom. This stuff tears really easy, but I like to cut it with scissors. All right, now that we're all cleaned up, the only thing left to do is to cut a piece of the filter material, slide it into our channel, make sure everything fits, 
fasten it to our channel. We'll go over how to do that. I looked up some of the specs on the filter material and how they want it fastened. And after that, we'll fire it up and give it a shot. All right, well, it's soon time to wrap this project up. So you can see what I got here. I got this Andre spray booth exhaust filter. Um, this comes by about three foot high by, I think it's a hundred foot long. Now, I only need a four foot piece and it has little blue marks on it every foot. So you can figure out, you know, how much you need. So I measured out or went to the fourth mark, cut it there, had to cut a foot off of it here because my box is only two foot high. Okay, so once you do that, um, we're going to slide it into the little cardboard channels that we made before. And how I'm going to fasten this is just with these little clips. These little basically paper clips or paper clamps. Okay, they have a lot of holding power. So to hold something like this is fine. I'm putting four down. That's nice and tight, nice and sealed up. I'm going to bring this one over and do the same thing. I'm going to make sure it's down onto my bottom channel. I'm going to put four in here, about easy, evenly spaced. Now, the only other thing that I recommend that maybe you do is if this is a little loose up top here because I'm not running the top channel, just get yourself a plate, piece of clear tape and tack it back. That's all you need to do. One spot right in the center sucks it right back to the, the board. Uh, or to your, sucks it right back to the box. No issues, no problems. Okay, so one last thing. If you find that you want added extra protection, I would recommend, and I may even do this myself, uh, putting a, another filter behind the box. Uh, most of the times I'm going to be running this out the garage door, but I am building this so I could have it self-contained. I just had the door over there, the man door just cracked a little bit so I get some positive air um, through this. So Let's give it a try. I'm going to go and I'm going to turn this switch on. Remember, this works both my fans at one time. The speed controls are underneath where I can reach in from the back. That's a positive of not having a filter on the back. I can reach in, you know, my speed control. I'm probably just going to want to have them on high all the time. So let's give it a try. I'll get some spray paint and we'll see what happens. All right. Let's got an ordinary can of spray paint here. Um, just going to spray it in the air a little bit. Get some mist going. I'm not wearing a respirator so I can talk to you guys. If I was painting, I would have a respirator on, but just for demonstration purposes, let's see if this works. So I'm spraying some above the booth, some below the booth, and we're going to see in a few seconds if I can even smell this. Tell you what, very impressed. There's no more mist in the air, just like that. Uh, I don't have any smell, very little. Go to the back of the unit here. I'm getting a very faint paint smell out the back. Again, I think I may put another foam filter in the back just for when I want to run this thing without the uh, door open. Um, otherwise, I'd probably set this underneath my garage door, bring the garage door down. Now, the other part you can do is you can plastic off from there on your openings if you really needed to on your garage door. Most of the times I'll just bring it down on my garage door. Then I got some positive air coming in through the garage door. And again, this is solely just for your garage. It's nothing professional, but I'll tell you what, you want to do a spray job. I'm going to be doing some demonstrations on spraying a lot of the Createx sealers with the small automotive gun. And that's going to put a lot of particles or overspray into the air. And this is going to do just exactly what I wanted it to do. You just see it going right in. I, I don't, barely even get any smell. Very, very impressed with this filter. There's no overspray in the air. Project turned out better than even I expected. Uh, it's not that you know big to store. You can stick it up against the wall, be out of your way, pull it out when you need it. All right, well, there you have it. A do-it-yourself spray booth filter for approximately under $100. Like I said, both fans were about $17. The most expensive part was the filter, but this filter material is going to last you a long time. 100 foot of this, I mean, you're only pulling off four foot at a time. It lasts you quite a while. Uh, I think that was like 60 something dollars. So again, all total, you're probably under $100. Um, I used some scrap wood to make the frame that was laying around the garage. If you had to go out and buy some wood, add another 20 bucks onto it. 
Again, we boxed it all out basically with cardboard and some uh, aluminum duct tape. Wired it up. I mean, the switch in the box, a few dollars. You really can't go wrong if it's something that you're interested in doing and you want to paint in your garage. Um, I've been out in the garage many, many years um, without a fan like this, and I've used a respirator, and I've used box fans, but uh, this filter just did a, a fantastic job. I wish I would have done it sooner. So with that, I hope you like this video. If you do, consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Share it out. Give me a couple comments, good or bad. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Help me build this channel. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for all the products I use in this video. And with that, see you in the next video.